Uh, anyhow, so I uh, kind of just like to uh, thank everyone for, for inviting me and the organizers and also to, to let you guys know that I was, I gave this talk about 2009, almost seven, eight years ago uh, among the same group of people, but we didn't call it the symposium, we call it the uh, TCJ Jamboree. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably remember that. Um, those were some good times. Um, and uh, today I'm going to talk about um, the efforts uh, that was, uh, no, that's not it. It's a PDF. Right there. The fourth one, yeah. Can you just go view? Uh-huh. Okay, great. All right, so, so yeah, so the, the, so the talk, topic, the title is Panglioma Integrative Analysis, the TCJ project since 2006, and uh, I'm, I'm a, one of three co-chairs, Rover Hawk and Antonio Yavoroni, um, are leading this project and this analysis, so I represent the TCJ LGG GBM Analysis Working Group. So brain cancer, as we know, it's, it's divided among grades and histology, as it was shown by Leila's presentation earlier today. Uh, the glioblastoma multiforme is representative of high grade, grade four, uh, typically of astrocytomas like cell types, generally have poor survival, uh, whereas the lower grade gliomas are diffuse, uh, generally grade two and grade three, with mixed histology. Um, astrocytomas, oligodendrogliomas, and oligoastrocytomas with an overall better survival. So generally, we, we consider histological grading inversely correlates with outcome. Uh, and since 2006, as you all know, T uh, TCJ started with three primary pilot tumor st studies, uh, GBM being one of them. And, 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 and uh, GBM actually was one of the first marker papers that came out of our group. Um, and I'm calling it this here version 1.0, because uh, subsequently in 2013, um, Cameron Brennan and Roverhawk and others and myself, we, we uh, published the second marker paper, version 2.0, with an expanded TCJ uh, set. Um, and in between that, we, we published two companion um, papers uh, looking both at gene expression profiling for these GBMs as well as denomethylation profiling where we identified a very specific, unique subtype, which we termed G-SIMP. Uh, so you know, we're very happy to note that the TCJ uh, uh, produced four outstanding papers with high impacts and, and high citations. Uh, and the, the first, or this version 2.0 marker paper uh, in 2013 was actually presented by Roverhawk and within the same uh, meeting, uh, then in the second TCJ symposium. So I, I put up a link up here so you can view the YouTube if you like. But, uh, I just want to highlight three main points from that paper because it relates to what I'm going to present to you later today. So the uh, first thing that, that we've identified was we identified novel mutations and rearrangements in EGFR using our expanded data set. Uh, TERP prom promoter mutation correlates with expression, suggesting a role in telomerase reactivation, and uh, the G-SIMP, the champion there, com was confirmed with uh, best overall survival. IDH1, IDH2 mutation. Uh, it's been well studied now in gliomas. Uh, we, and among others, uh, reported um, a high correlation with IDH mutation um, with uh, an impact on denomethylation, as uh, represented here. Uh, G simps having the lowest, or, I'm sorry, the highest methylation pa uh, pattern among all high grade GBMs, generally um, defined as being younger, the age of onset, uh, better survival, and um, as I said, I, associated with IDH1 mutation. And we've also shown that this is highly uh, represented uh, among the lower grade gliomas, among other people. So what we did here uh, to kind of give you a bird's eye view of the epigenomic landscape across all TCGA tumors, this is, we, we pulled down 10,000 plus tumor types across 34 different tumor types, calculated the average mean methylation level for each sample and plotted it here on a box plot and then sorted it by the overall mean distribution uh, per tumor type. And what you can see is that the LGGs has the highest overall methylation level uh, across all these different tumor types, whereas the testicular cancer, kind of the positive control there, has the lowest methylation level as expected since some, some monomas are mostly unmethylated. Uh, IDH mutations correlates with favorable outcome in GBM and astrocytomas. 
Uh, and the, the main marker paper that came out, uh, or that's be coming out in, in the coming weeks, um, was also presented uh, uh, last year by Daniel Bratt. And again, I'm not going to go through any of the, the, the topics that he mentioned. Uh, and I'll just give you guys a link up here if you guys want to watch his video. Uh, but the main things that, that we are, are reporting in this paper is that we're identifying three major clusters. Layla kind of represented that earlier today. The IDH mutant codels. So these are samples that have the codeletions of the 1P19 co-arm. Uh, IDH mutants with non-codels. And then there's a subset of IDH wild type, um, and, and as Leila had represented, these are uh, generally of the GBM-like. So we have IDH wild type, regardless of histology, had genomic aberrations and clinical behavior similar to primary glioblastomas. Uh, nearly all IDH mutant LGGs without the codel deletion had mutations in P53, ATRX, uh, and so forth. And LGGs that were IDH mutant and codel um, had the most favorable clinical outcomes and were associated with mutations uh, among the sick. FUBP1, NUCH1, and TERP promoters. So these two uh, efforts uh, by TCJ um, uh, expanded our insight into the glioma uh, field, particularly looking at the molecular uh, associated with the clinical phenotypes. And given this, uh, we then formed an analysis working group that started about a one and a half years ago. We're currently in the writing stage. Uh, again, this is uh, the idea behind this is to then look um, and, and understand the characteristics, molecular features uh, between low-grade gliomas and GBM. And also, given this larger expanded data set, uh, can we then understand the relationship between those uh, GBM-like LGGs as well as the G-SIMP phenotypes that are very similar to the LGG phenotype? Now that we have this expanded set, can we now learn more about that? So the, the clinical molecular characteristics of, of the glioma data set that we have through TCGA inc includes over 1,122 samples. Uh, majority of them are GBMs, but there's an almost an even mix between GBMs and LGGs. Uh, since the new paper that's coming out, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, which uh, profiled 289 LGGs, we've expanded that now with an additional 290. Uh, and, and IDH status are known for over 87% of the samples. So molecular profiling uh, of the largest glioma data set to date, uh, we have a diverse set of uh, platforms that we, we're, we've used. Um, again, this is going historical here from 2006 beyond, so you can imagine that technology has advanced considerably during this time. So there's a lot of different platforms that are being represented per experiment. Uh, but the major experiments that we, we've, we've profiled and, and have for this particular data set includes gene expression, DNA copy number, DNA methylation, somatic mutations. So the overall genomic landscape that we found, looking at this entire panglioma data sets, is that GISTIC have identified 57 disjoint amplifications with 105 deletion, deleted regions. These are very large megabase regions across 1,000 glioma patients. MUTSIC identified 100 uh, candidate genes. This is profiled across the three different centers. Uh, 30 of which were previously reported, both uh, from the first marker paper in GBM and the, the, the new marker paper that's coming out. And again, the usual suspects, IDH1, P53, ADRX, EGFR, P10, PIK3CA, PIK3R1, and NF1 have all been represented additional, with an additional set of 70 genes uh, that are now being reported. And, and here's just a, a snapshot of some of these genes. What we are uh, now able to, to, to get from this larger sample set and power is that we can, we can get lower frequent uh, numbers um, of mutant events, so, and, and these are uh, candidates for uh, oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, so such as SET-D2, ARID-D2, KRAS, DNMT3A, uh, and, and NRAS, and so forth, that have not been, ever been reported uh, in either GBM or LGGs, and so we're now able to now report this in this new manuscript. So looking at the, the overall genomic landscape, uh, Flores said what he'd done was organize the patients according to those three major clusters that we uh, are, are looking at, the IDH mutants, IDH mutant non codels and IDH wild type. And then here, uh, uh, selecting specific genes uh, associated with particular pathways, such as cell cycle, the RAS pathway, apoptosis, chromatin modifiers, uh, mTOR, and not signaling, and cohesion. And what we can see from here from this global uh, landscape is that the, the vast majority of the IDH wild type are represented by cell cycle and RAS pathways, uh, as well as the mTOR pathway, whereas the IDH mutant non-codels are dominated by apoptotic, apoptosis-related genes, as well as chromatin modifiers, and the IDH mutant codels are dominated by uh, the notch signaling. 
What we also did was uh, looked at the relationship between ATRX and TERP promoter mutations. We found that they're mutually exclusive in our cohort, as was reported in, in several recent articles in the, in the past couple years. One thing that we did, though, do with this uh, uh, data set was use the normal tumor blood samples um, and estimated the tumor length, a telomere length for each of these tumors, and then associated that with whether they are uh, ATRX mutants or TERT promoter mutants. And what we found is that the TERT promoter mutant subgroups have a lower telomere length overall compared to their normal partners, whereas the ATRX uh, mutants have a longer telomere length. The RNA sequencing data, uh, we have uh, over 667 gliomas represented here, uh, defines four major clusters, uh, three of them dominated by IDH mutants and one of them dominated by the IDH wild type. We've also looked at denomethylation, uh, identified two macro clusters dominated by IDH mutants and IDH wild type, and within each of these groups, we have three subclusters. Uh, LGM1, so we're calling every, all the clusters from here on out LG as lower grade glioma and GBM, and then M would represent the, the platform. So in that case, the, for the expression, we'll call it LGR. And so here we're calling LGM1, 2, and 3 dominated by IDH mutants, and LG4, 5, and 6 are the wild types. And there's a split between the GBMs and the LGGs. Um, we all, uh, in collaboration with Sophie, she was able to, and her team were able to merge uh, the two expression and methylation data to, to generate a tumor map uh, and, and then overlaying that with uh, sample types defined by the four different um, clusters by expression and the six different clusters by methylation. And you can see they, they nicely separate the IDH mutants and the IDH wild types. What we also looked at uh, and it was quite interesting is that the IDH mutants uh, are dominated by three different clusters and if you look at the genomic epigenomic profile, uh, genome-wide, is looking at over 20,000 probes per sample, there's clearly a difference between uh, ID, uh, LGM1, 2, and 3 by methylation, even though they all are represented by an IDH1 mutation status. And even among the IDH wild type, there are some differences between them. So this is not looking at the methylation just from that heat map, but it's using that heat map as a discovery and then now looking at the entire genomic profiling and then seeing that there is true stratifications genome-wide. Survival now shows that there's this strong stratification uh, by these uh, LGM methylation clusters. Uh, LGM1, 2, and 3, which as I said are, are IDH mutants, they have a higher methylation profile, are, uh, have the, the overall best survival, whereas there is a subset of this IDH mutant, that, which we termed LGM1, that have a lower uh, survival, and this is quite significant, even after adjustment by tumor type and age. IDH wild type also shows a, a striking some, uh, difference in survival, whereas the LGM6 here highlighted in blue, uh, shows a tendency for an improved survival. Now, I'm not going to talk about the IDH wild type in this talk. We don't have a lot of time, but I'm going to go ahead and mention to you some of the findings that we've come up with within the LGM1 cohort. So what we did, Tachi here, my postdoc in my lab, she, she uh, in collaboration with Michele, uh, took the DNA methylation data as well as the gene expression data. Uh, uh, and I didn't tell you this uh, earlier, but the LGM1s are dominated by the non-CODELs. And so to uh, eradicate any influences by the CODELs, we, we just focus only within the non-CODEL sub-cohort. Sub and then looked at the differences between this LGM1 and LGM2, since LGM2 is dominated by the non-CODELs. And what we found is that there is a lot of genes that have lost methylation compared to the, the counterparts. These are all associated within, these all reference in relation to LGM1. Uh, and we also find that genes that are upregulated and genes that are downregulated as they lose their methylation. So interestingly, when we take these 179 probes that we've identified as being different between these LGM1 cohort and the LGM2 cohort, what you find is that the, the, the dominant difference is not just the entire cohort of the LGM1 non-CODELs. We remind you again, the LGM1s were defined by a discovery panel that was designed uh, to look at tumor-specific probes. Now, when we do a more supervised analysis, given that discovery analysis, we now discover a substructure within the LGM1, this hypo class within the LGM1, and it's represented even in a, in a different data set, like gene expression data set, which have a pronounced 
uh, expression pattern um, elevated within this cohort. You can see the, the second track there, the, the black and the white. The blacks are the GBMs and whites are LGGs. So it's not just uh, high grade GBMs that are dominated within this feature. There's a mix of some LGGs as well in there. So uh, we, she then looked at the overall mean methylation level, and lo and behold, those, those guys are genome-wide are much lower methylation than the, uh, the reciprocal LGM-1 hyper group as well as the LGM-2 hyper group. And now when we looked at survival based on this new stratification, you see now that the, the dominant trend for, for poor survival within an LGM-1 IDH mutant code Codel or non Codel subtype dominated by this hypo phenotype within the LGM1, whereas the LGM1 hyper group is an elevated uh, survival uh, similar to uh, its counterparts in the LGM2 and LGM3. So we uh, set out to then investigate genome wide, given that we have a 450K platform uh, that, that uh, many of you probably worked with and, and know very, very extensively that these not only covers canonical promoters, but also covers uh, intergenic regions such as enhancers, candidate enhancers, and silencers. Uh, and so what we set out to do was look at uh, all these features that we have. Uh, uh, given the differences between these two platforms and see whether we can find genomic features that are, uh, that are unique. And what we found is that, uh, is that there, uh, I don't know if I have a pointer, yeah, 67% uh, of our, our set of probes that we find are enriched in the open seas or these intergenic regions. And when we do a motif analysis to define a genomic signature, uh, we find that SOX2 and the SOX family motif factor is, is prominent and enriched within these, these cohorts uh, of, of probes. Uh, and it's, uh, we also found that the expression of SOX to be elevated 12 out of the, uh, I'm sorry, 10 out of the 12 SOX families are elevated in this cohort compared to this uh, LGM2 cohort. We then set out to validate this data. Uh, we, we pulled in um, a DNA methylation data that was recently reported uh, in Nature. These are uh, all uh, IDH mutant cohorts. And using the same probe set that we have here, given this new data set, non-TCGA data, mind you, uh, we can now then see that there are three samples of very low methylation level here. Uh, and if you look at our data set here, we have 25 that we're identifying as LGM1 hypo. This represents a roughly a, a frequency rate of about 5.5% of our data set. And in their data set, 3 out of 49 represents 6%. So it's kind of nice that the, the frequency uh, is represented here. Um, so one last thing, uh, we also looked and, and tried to identify uh, epigenetically silent biomarkers or prognostic biomarkers that defines these differences in, in survival. What Tha uh, Thais did, a uh, student in my lab, she uh, defined five different regulatory groups. We're calling them E-regs, epigenetically regulated group one, two, three, four, and five. These are groups of genes that are hypermethylated within a group of, of patients that we now know are, 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 are different in survival and clinical output uh, compared to all the other ones. And here, these are some non-TCGA tumor brain samples here. Uh, and then we took the RNA sequencing data. So for example, these cohorts of, of genes here are hypermethylated and their gene expression for those same genes are downregulated and upregulated in all the other ones. And again, here this is representative of the IDH mutant as a whole, downregulated, upregulated, and so forth. You can see that there's sets of genes here that are well defining each of these different survival uh, uh, groups. So uh, obviously this is uh, not as important unless you can validate this. And so we did validate this. We pulled in uh, four different publications that was recently published within the last two years. Uh, the Edelberg uh, Sturm paper here looking at 136 GBMs uh, among 59 pediatrics and, and some adults. Uh, 61 pilocytic astrocytomas. These are tumor types of low grade, grade one types. Uh, uh, lower grade gliomas here, mix of non-codels and codels as well as 46 oligodendrogliomma tumors. And you can see very clearly using the same sets of genes here that we've identified using the TCJ cohort, you can see that they're very well reproduced uh, within uh, these, these sample sets. And then we've also then were able to classify these data according to our subtypes of LGM1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The survival, uh, very similar to what we're, we're producing. Obviously, we have the advantage of a larger data set. So this LGM1 cohort re is represented of 55 samples, whereas in, in our validation set, we were able to identify seven in their cohort. 
yet there's still a nice trend for the similar profile. Okay, so I've got 30 seconds, and I'm just going to end here with a summary. Four major points. Uh, one, we identified several novel genes that likely contribute to glioma glioma genesis. Uh, we showed that mutations in tertian ATRX have an impact on telomer length. We identified molecularly tumor subtypes that defy traditional histology, and we identified epigenetically regulated genes that can predict patient outcome. And again, I just want to acknowledge uh, some of the key people that have worked on this project. Again, this is a project since 2006, so every member here has contributed significantly to this work. Uh, but leading this project right now is myself, Rul Verhaak, and Antonia Yavoroni, uh, as well as uh, Flores, a student in Rul's lab, Michele, a collaborator of ours from Italy, and two of my students here, Tatiani Malti and Thais Abidaci, who have uh, been doing uh, lots of work on the epigenetics. And again, lots of people involved in this project, as well as all the analysis working group from GBM to LGG are being represented here. So thank you very much. Uh, IDH is a metabolic gene. Do you expect to see differences and have you looked for differences in the metabolic profiles of the tumors? <coughs> No, we did not look at that, but yeah, we would expect to see something if we have, maybe the proteomic data can help us with that, but uh, it, we just didn't have, again, you have to understand the GBM was started in 2006, proteomic stuff hasn't started until later on, so we're un underpowered there. I know the TCGA was not really designed to have clinical impact, but this is such a terrible disease, and I know brain cancers were selected to be uh, an important TCGA tumor type, because prognosis is so bad. Do you think that there's anything that you've done here that um, will have an impact on patient care? And of course, you can't count the discovery of IDH1, which you know came from another group. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and definitely the clinical no impact. No intended. The clinical impact of this is, is I think it was pronounced, is very strong because there are subsets of patients within the lower grade gliomas, for example, that are wild type, that uh, have differences uh, clinically as well as molecular differences, and this is going to help at least uh, for treatment protocols to define whether they should be, uh, you know, exhibiting a particular treatment protocol or not. So, thank you. <laughs> it's a difficult uh, question, but I'm not a clinician, so <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. I'm, I'm thinking of a, a big clinical impact piece. I'm just looking at Antonio Yavaroni, who's near me. The <laughs> discovery of FGFR3 translocation. So I'm not sure that was, you know, strictly speaking, a TCGA thing, but he's part of the TCGA group. Um, but my question actually was about a different uh, kinase that you mentioned, which was uh, KDR. Uh, and, and you talked about KDR as a new candidate oncogene. Um, but it's part of the, you know, that's really driven by the fact that it's part of the same amplicon as PDGFRA and KIP. And I'm wondering what's the evidence for, for KDR being a, a, a separate um, uh, you know, actual target of the amplification or driver oncogene? Just wonder if you can comment on that. Yeah, well, I, I, I really can't answer that question effectively, and I'm just going to have to say that there's just a lower number of samples. We're looking at about five samples or ten samples that exhibit this particular mutation. But... Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to have to defer to Antonio for that. So, Huda, I was just thinking it might be important to look at those five mutations and see where they land. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. Hope, I hope Rule is listening. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Hu Tang. We are going to move on to the next talk. So, Angeliki Pantasi uh, from Harvard Medical School will talk about somatic structure rearrangement in RAS pathway. <laughs> 